Our top focus at this hour, in the biggest blow to the Al-Qaeda since its founder Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011, United States has now confirmed that they have killed Al-Qaeda leader and bin Laden's successor Ayman al-Zohari. The Al-Qaeda leader was killed in a U.S. airstrike in Afghanistan over the weekend. Officials said Zohari was on the balcony of a safe house when the drone fired two missiles at him. Other family members were present, but they were unharmed as of now. Now, while delivering a speech at the White House, U.S. President Joe Biden said that justice has now been delivered and the terrorist leader is no more. Biden said U.S. intelligence officials tracked al-Zohari to a home in downtown Kabul where he was hiding out with his family. Biden further said that he approved the operation last week and it was carried out on Sunday. Biden has confirmed that there were no civilian casualties in the entire operation which took place. My fellow Americans, on Saturday, at my direction, the United States successfully concluded an airstrike in Kabul, Afghanistan that killed the Emir of Al-Qaeda, Iman al-Zawiri. One week ago, after being advised that the conditions were optimal, I gave the final approval to go get him. And the mission was a success. None of his family members were hurt, and there were no civilian casualties. Now, Biden further detailed al-Zuhari's role in leading al-Qaeda since Osama bin Laden was killed by U.S. forces in 2011, including calling on followers to attack the U.S. and allies in videos. He further said that no matter how many years it takes, if someone is a threat to the United States, they will not be spared. Listen in. No matter how long it takes, no matter where you hide, if you are a threat to our people, the United States will find you and take you out. Zuhari was one of the world's most wanted terrorists and the main mastermind of the September 11, 2001 attacks that killed nearly 3,000 people. Now, the drone attacks is the first known American strike inside Afghanistan since U.S. troops left the country in August 2021. Now... Al-Zuhari's death raises questions about whether Zuhari received sanctuary or safety from Taliban following their takeover of Kabul last year. U.S. officials say that senior Taliban officials were very much aware of his presence in the city and they rather provided him a safe heaven. In a statement, Taliban spokesperson condemned the U.S. airstrike, calling it a violation of international principles. And for more on this, joining us live from Washington, D.C. is Fred Flitz, who is the president of Center for Security Policy. He is also the former NSC chief of staff. We're also being joined by a correspondent, Susan Therani, from New York. Welcome to the broadcast. Now, my first question is for you, Susan. The Taliban has reacted to the drone strike, condemning it. And the tweet by the Taliban regime came just a few minutes before Biden's press conference, where he revealed about the operation. Can you tell us about the tweet and the timing of it specifically? So initially, we learned uh, that there had been a drone operation around Kabul by the CIA. Uh, we didn't know who uh, was targeted. And then AP was the first to report that it was Amon al-Zawahiri. Uh, reporters here say during the weekend at the Pentagon, they were sworn to secrecy and they actually knew it was Amon al-Zawahiri. While the Taliban spokesperson condemned the attack shortly before the United States announced that this incident occurred uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, the Taliban spokesman made that announcement before the U.S. announcement without saying it was Ayman al-Zawahiri, raising suspicion that uh, the Taliban well were informed of this incident uh, during the weekend. They did create some sort of confusion that there was more than one drone strike. Um, but uh, then again, you know, it raises the question, first of all, uh, how is it that Ayman al Zawahiri was able to stay uh, and move in and around Kabul uh, for this long? Uh, and also, 
uh, the fact that um, you know we have to learn more about how this operation was carried out and um, you know from where uh, and who was it that provided the intelligence uh, speaking to reporters on Monday evening senior administration officials said that they had a number of independent sources that led them to Ayman al-Zawahiri but we'll learn more um, in the days to come Right, Susan, let's get our guest Fred into the discussion as well. Fred, let's talk about the timing of the drone strike. Now, Nancy Pelosi is on an a to as of now. My question to you is, what ramifications will the incident have on our security? I, I think timing is an interesting question. I don't think it will affect Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which I understand will happen soon. But there's some concern in the U.S., uh, the incredible coincidence that this is occurring one year after the disastrous U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. I don't think that there's a link, but I think the U.S. Congress is going to be investigating how this happened, what the timing of it was, and are we sure that civilians were not killed in, in the attack? We've been told in the past that drone strikes didn't kill civilians. We later found that that isn't true. Uh, we had to sort all this out. But at the, on the surface right now, it looks like a big win for President Biden. Right. Uh, my next question is for you, Susan. Now, it's a major conquest for the Biden administration, and we are pretty much focusing on the timings. Now, now the, the operation takes place, the mission takes place at a time when the Biden's approval rating had dipped to uh, quite low numbers. How do you see this mission impacting his political career? Yeah, President Biden is facing historic low numbers domestically. And whether, you know, this is a foreign policy win for him. This is, as some call it, his bin Laden moment uh, as uh, pre former President Obama had. Uh, but, you know, one observer said that ultimately this um, doesn't uh, really bring down prices and inflation for ordinary Americans. Uh, a foreign policy is important. Uh, but it also raises the question, notably regarding Afghanistan, because of its faulty withdrawal one year on. Um, while the Biden administration will play on this as a win, it does raise questions on whether or not his over-the-horizon uh, capabilities will really work. Remember, this was a CIA operation on the one hand. And on the other hand, uh, the question remains that how is it that one year on, um, Ayman al-Zawahiri was, so, uh, was able to really... Uh, again you know uh, freely move around uh, afghanistan and this is also again you know in the backdrop of 20 years of uh, of war so you know those are the questions that still remain but uh, there's no doubt that yes i agree this is a win for the biden administration for now and he'll definitely play um this issue to the american voters whether or not you know they'll see this as something that'll sway their votes it's highly unlikely foreign policy <laughs> isn't really a main uh, component, notably at a time when Americans are really facing kitchen table issues right now and have a lot on their plate to deal with. Right. Uh, we will. I, I would also like to bring in our Pakistan Bureau Chief Anas Malik into the discussion. Anas, uh, bring us up to speed as to how the operation panned out. It took place on Sunday and which was the house that was targeted. We are learning that the Taliban knew about his presence in the city and he was given a safe spot. Uh, take us through how the operation took place on Sunday. Well, roughly about 36 hours back, about 36 hours back on Sunday morning at about 2 a.m., we saw Kabul being jolted by at least two uh, two sounds of two explosions, uh, and they were being said that it was uh, uh, the IS uh, who had uh, carried a drone strike. We saw initially that the IS telegram channels, not the official ones, uh, but uh, that operated at a second tier, uh, they were rejoicing the fact that the IS had conducted a drone strike in yes. Kabul. Now that was that would have raised a lot of alarm bells because just these just the month of. Muharram is starting, the Islamic month of Muharram is starting, so an IS, ISIS drone strike would have been uh, historically a headache given that the ISIS had, had been historically targeting the Shiites. But uh, as the story unfolded, as the day progressed, uh, we heard that uh, uh, 
uh, it was in the vicinity of Sherpur. Uh, this was yesterday. It was in the vicinity of Sherpur, uh, which is just adjacent to Wazir Akbar Khan and in front of the green zone. Yeah. So if I just uh, explain you the demography or the alignment of the area, Sherpur and Wazir Akbar Khan are adjacent to each other. In fact, one, uh, the inner rows of at, uh, at least three inner rows connect uh, Wazir Akbar Khan, which is a considerably upper uh, upper class Porsche area to Sherpur. Sherpur is the same area that had housed the house of uh, Bismillah Muhammadi that was bombed by the Taliban on the 2nd of August last year. Uh, just a year back, I was there. I was, we were covering it from the ground. Uh, and th this drone strike came in the Sherpur area, very near to Wazir Akbar Khan. Initial report, report suggested that it was on the Taliban police chief. But that was not the case. This is a 17, uh, this is a 14, uh, four story uh, uh, house or a villa which has 17 rooms, 17 rooms that was targeted by the by, uh, by the US forces through a drone strike. What we know that multiple rockets were fired and now President Biden, ha Biden has come out and he has made a statement. The Taliban are tight-lipped about it. Yesterday light we saw a statement from Zabiullah Mujahid, the Taliban spokesperson. Uh, in fact, Bilal Karimi, the deputy the spokesperson of him, uh, he also confirmed that uh, uh, that uh, there was indeed a drone strike and they called it as a violation of uh, the Doha agreement. But coming to the question that uh, Susan was raising, I was just listening to that, uh, it would be no surprise in case if uh, 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 Ayman al-Zawahiri was indeed uh, in Afghanistan or was indeed in the capital city of Kabul for one very reason. The Following the Taliban takeover, uh, the ease of passage, the ease of passage to the, the uh, to to uh, elements like him or from the Al Qaeda uh, is quite considerably easy, especially on uh, uh, the three. Uh, border crossings, be that be the Tajik one, be that be the Uzbek one, or be that be uh, the Pakistan one as well. Of course, Pakistan shares the longest border, so it would not be a surprise uh, of having his presence in a, a, a post city such as Kabul itself. Right, uh, Anas. Now, under the 2020 Doha deal, the Taliban promised not to allow Afghanistan to be used again as a launch pad for terrorism. But experts believe that the group never broke their ties with, with Al-Qaeda. And according to some U.S. officials, Taliban knew about Al-Zohari's location and they rather provided him safety. Can you, can you give us some light on this? Well, it would it would be no surprise that Taliban already knew about his location. In in fact, a section from the top tier would have known, uh, and in, uh, could have possibly been given um, um, uh, some security as well as as what we have seen in the case previously. Uh, but uh, to say that it would have been in a in a structural format, that I think that would have merely been an overassessment. Uh, but you rightly mentioned. I asked uh, the Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid in the second press conference. In, in fact, in the very first, uh, first press conference that he had done, and that was on uh, the 17th of August, if I remember that correctly, or uh, last year. And I said, what happens to your relations with Al-Qaeda? If we can just play out, uh, if the production team can just play that out from the 17th of August, the very first press conference by Zabiullah Mujahid. And I asked him, what happened? Uh, what happens to your relations with Al Qaeda? And he says that he they, he said the Zabiullah Mujahid, the Taliban spokesperson, said that we would not let them be uh, uh, present here, and we would not let them breed, and rather address the concerns of the international community. But uh, Al Qaeda is not the only one uh, that has been a headache for the region. We've previously seen about the presence of the Tariq -e Taliban fighters. We've seen about the presence of the ETIM or the uh, uh, Eastern. Turkestan uh, Islamic movement, then uh, other terror organizations which right. are a threat to that uh, on the, that northern strip uh, of Afghanistan. So that is something that people believe that is used as a leverage by the Taliban to coerce the international community to ha to talk to them. So therefore, the claim by the U.S. admins it would not be rather shocking, but it is in line with what we have been seeing at least in the past year. Right, right, right on us. I would now like to bring our guest who's live with us from Washington, D.C. Fred, uh, my question to you is that uh, where is Al-Qaeda right now in terms of its threat to West and the United States? What lies ahead for Al-Qaeda after its chief was killed? Well, there were reports that uh, they were already looking for a replacement 
for Zawahiri because he was ill. Uh, and I think that's always in the cards. That we, we, ha we are not able to knock off these terrorist leaders and they're quickly replaced. Uh, but I think a question here is to talk about uh, whether this marks a change in Biden administration policy on the question of terrorism and radical Islam as terrorism. Will they make this a higher priority and recognize that these groups thrive in poorly governed areas of the world, like Afghanistan, and especially in Africa, where Al Qaeda and ISIS are making great inroads. If this indicates the Biden administration recognizes that and will move terrorism higher in its list of national security priorities, I'd be quite pleased. Right. Um... My last question is for you, Susan. Now, the drone strike comes just a year after U.S. troops withdrew from the Afghanistan soil, and it has changed counterterrorism in the landscape that presents new challenges right now. What are your inputs on this? Well, there, you know, as mentioned, there is growing concern right now because of the faulty withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, by the Biden administration and the vacuum that it left. Um, we knew that this was going to happen. We knew that the, it was going to become a safe haven uh, for terrorism. And because, uh, quote unquote, new terrorism, which has been prevalent in the last 20 years, is so asymmetrical, one has to wonder whether or not the killing of al-Zawahiri, while it's very significant and might be a defeat uh, to al-Qaeda because of the ideological nature of it, and al-Qaeda wants that, uh, you know, it'll mushroom on and it, it, and it will continue. Al-Zawahiri is dead right now, but we also know uh, through the United States, through the United Nations, again, because of the way the Biden administration withdrew from Afghanistan, there are tens of thousands of terrorist uh, recruits going into Afghanistan, uh, and they're joining not only al-Qaeda, but groups like ISIS and ISIS-K, something that the Security Council is warning against, the UN Secretary General is warning against, many here in the United States are warning against, and, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see whether or not you know, as our guest mentioned, if Biden's counterterrorism efforts will be uh, more serious. Right. Thanks, Susan, Anas, and Fred for getting us up to speed on this. We will, of course, be tracking this throughout the day. Thanks very much.